Having a basic understanding of proper anatomical terminology is one of the most fundamental aspects of your medical education and one you have to master before embarking on your quest to understand the human body. Imagine, for example, trying to describe the location of this bone in relation to this vein. What would you say? Up and right? What if the hand rotated this way? Now it's down and left. Even in this simple scenario, we need some more robust ways to describe the relationship between structures, otherwise nobody would know what we're talking about. My name's Connor, and today we're going to be learning how to describe locations using anatomical terminology and planes. Let's start by meeting Greg. Greg's a pretty normal looking bloke, but you'll notice that he's standing in a rather unusual way. His face is looking forward, with his eyes focused on the distance. His mouth is closed and his expression is neutral. His palms are facing directly forward. His thumb pad is at 90 degrees to his finger pads, and his toes are pointing forwards too. Greg is in fact standing in a rigidly defined way known as the anatomical position. The anatomical position is how we need to think of all of our anatomy from now on. Whether we're talking about the chambers of the heart, the limbs, or the inner workings of the brain, we need to always imagine our subject standing like Greg. This allows us to describe how structures are related without first having to define their orientation space. Now, let's start by putting this newly defined anatomical position to use. We'll begin by drawing a line down the centre of Greg's body, dividing him into equal right and left halves. This is known as the median sagittal line, and it will be our first point of reference when describing the location of anatomical structures. Anything that sits closer to this line is described as being medial, and anything that sits further from this line is described as being lateral. For example, the eyes can be described as lateral to the nose, as the nose sits right on the median sagittal line, whereas the eyes sit some distance away from it. Likewise, we can describe the little finger as being medial to the thumb, as it is closer to the median sagittal line. These two words come from median, meaning middle, and latus, meaning side. One last thing to note is that in the hand and arm, we can use the terms ulna and radial to mean the same thing as medial and lateral. Next, we'll take a look at Greg from the side. This time, we'll draw a line down his side to divide him into a front and back half. This is known as the coronal line. Anything behind this line is referred to as a posterior or dorsal structure, and anything in front of it is an anterior or ventral structure. Again, we can use these terms to describe how structures are related to one another. Anything that is more towards the front can be described as an anterior to the thing in question. For example, the shins can be described as anterior to the calves, and the ears can be described as posterior to the nose. These words derive from anti, meaning front, and post, meaning after. Now, let's discuss some terms used to describe structures' relationship to one another in the vertical plane. These are inferior, or caudal, and superior, or cranial. Something that's lower down when in the anatomical position can be described as inferior to another thing, or vice versa. For example, we can say that the chin is inferior to the nose, or that the hair is the most superior part of the body. The word superior comes from super, meaning above, and inferior has its root in words for low and below. Next, we have some more specialised anatomical terminology. These are the words proximal and distal. We use these when considering how something is related to a structure's origin. For example, if we consider the start of the arm to be the shoulder, the elbow is situated more proximal to the shoulder than the hand is. We commonly use the words proximal and distal when talking about the branches of nerves, veins or arteries. For example, we can say that the median nerve in the hand branches distal to the wrist joint. The word distal comes from distanced, meaning away from, and proximal comes from proximus, meaning close to. The next of our specialised terms are used to describe how close structures are to the surface of the body. To see how these are used, we need to take a slice out of Greg's arm. 
Here, we'll take a transverse cut across his upper arm in order to view the muscles, arteries, veins and nerves within it. When looking at this, we can see the pink skin around the outside and everything else on the inside. Using this knowledge, we can say that the skin is a superficial structure and the muscle bellies are deep structures. This is because the skin is closer to the surface of the body than the muscles are. In other words, superficial means related to the outside, and deep means further down. Our final location term is one that isn't used very often. It is used only to describe a structure's proximity to the nose. For example, the frontal lobe of the brain is rostral to the occipital lobe, as it is closer to the nose than the occipital lobe is. Rostral comes from the root rostrum, which means beak or nose. One final thing to note is that these words are not always used on their own. Frequently, anatomists will combine terms to avoid using multiple words to describe the locations of things. An example of this is in describing the relationship of the chin to the occiput, or back of the head. We could say that the chin is anterior and inferior to the occiput, but a savvy anatomist would say the chin is in fact antero-inferior. Another example is between the nipple and the armpit. We can combine terms to say that the armpit is posterolateral to the nipple. Okay, now we've covered all of the location terminology, let's have a quick recap before we move on. A medial structure is one that's closer to the midline of the body, and a lateral structure is one that's further away. An anterior structure is towards the front of the body, and a posterior structure is towards the back. Superior structures are higher up, and inferior structures are lower down. Proximal structures are closer to the origin of something, and distal structures are further away. Superficial things are closer to the body surface, and deep things are closer to its interior. Finally, rostral structures are closer to the nose. Now, we'll finish off by talking about the three most commonly used anatomical planes. An anatomical plane is used to cut the body in a pre-specified fashion in order to view it in a particular way. We've already used all three planes earlier in this tutorial, but here we'll look at them in a little more detail. The first is our sagittal plane. This cuts the body in a head-to-toe fashion in order to divide it into right and left sides. The median sagittal plane cuts the body directly down its centre, and parasagittal planes cut the body in any other position that is not directly down the middle. I remember sagittal as S for side arm, as we're viewing the body from the side. An example of a use of the sagittal plane is in viewing the brain from this fashion, as utilised when assessing the brainstem and ventricles. The second of the common planes is the transverse plane. This is also known as an axial or horizontal plane. A transverse plane divides the body into superior and inferior parts and is the typical plane used when imaging the body with a CT or MRI scanner. Looking at the chest with a transverse plane gives us this view where we can see the lungs in purple, several muscles and bones and some of the chambers of the heart right in the centre. Finally we have the coronal plane which divides the body into anterior and posterior parts. The coronal plane of the head produces this rather creepy view of the brain, eyeballs, nasal cavity, mouth and tongue. Let's recap the planes. The sagittal plane splits the body into left and right parts. The transverse plane splits it into superior and inferior parts. And the coronal plane splits it into anterior and posterior parts. Great! So there we go! We've covered all of the common anatomical location terms and the three common anatomical planes. You're well on your way to becoming a top scoring anatomist. If you found this tutorial useful, please consider subscribing to our channel. It really gives us a boost to keep producing helpful content for you and others. We've got tutorials coming up on anatomical regions and movements, so subscribe so you don't miss out. Also, check out our website for a handout related to this session that produces a neat summary as well as some questions to test yourself with. I hope you've enjoyed the session and have a great day. Mm -hmm.